Coming up on show 847, the VW ID3 finally available to order right here in GB. But how much are they charging? We'll stick around and we'll find out. Plus on the podcast today, BMW shuts down a factory, but wait, this is a good news story. It's because they're electrifying it. Audi are talking bi-directional charging. Interesting. Renault have just had a massive order for a car sharing, well, sort of car sharing fleet. And why are we seeing the Mercedes-Benz EQC in camouflage? It's the next version. Isn't it still a new EV? Well, they're already working on the next one. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, you know what? Wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. It's Wednesday, 22nd of July. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. And thank you for listening today. Even though the news is slightly delayed, I took my birthday off. So that's why. Let's kick off with Volkswagen, the ID3, now available to order for the pre-bookers here in the UK. Volkswagen has opened the order books for its ID3, allowing those who placed a deposit early uh, to specify and even confirm their car. Now, it's only one version. It's called the ID3 First Edition. And without the plug-in car grant, it costs 38880 It has, uh, there's different battery sizes on that platform. Uh, so which one's this? Well, this is the 58 kilowatt hour battery. That's net, by the way. That's what you get to play with. Uh, so 58, it's a reasonable size battery. It'll do you about 260 odd miles on a charge and uh, it does have quite fast charging on that one it's about 100 kilowatts charge speeds uh, says next green car website now powered by a 150 kilowatt electric motor uh, the id3 first edition will do the 0 to 62 sprint in 7.3 seconds and that is exactly the same as its golf cousin but it's definitely not to be compared to a Golf. No, VW would like to to, uh, to remind you this is not the Golf. This is the whole new face of VW. This is indeed the ID3. Um, it, that is a reasonable amount of money uh, with different options. Maybe you want some paint. Uh, well, I mean, you get some paint, but maybe you want some different options and delivery fees and things like that and plug-in car grants to take off. And But you're still talking about late 30s, depending on if you get funky with the options list. You can still get a £40,000, because we're talking pounds here, aren't we? £40,000 ID3 that does 260 odd miles you know you've really got to want a vw to get this uh, and that's fine because plenty of people do uh, there are compelling cars on the market and we've talked about many of them um, recently that are around that size okay so maybe actually a little bit smaller so we've talked about things like the peugeot e2008 and the ds don't call it a citroen the ds cross back e tents uh, ds3 uh, but there's a ds4 coming as well and and so there's just there's just lots of cars around in the next six months some of them available now some of them coming very soon i won't talk about things like the peugeot e208 and the corsa e because they're a segment down but still very compelling cars with very similar sized batteries and maybe not as much utility because they're a little bit smaller but certainly for ten thousand pounds less um it's not cheap, but did we ever think the VW ID3 would be cheap? Well, no. Let's get the take from Top Gear magazine. Let's hear what they have to say. Uh, they say that cheaper models with less range, less performance, and less kit will follow. But if you want to be one of the first uh, to get your mitts on VW's first ever purpose-built EV, uh, you'll need to part with £38,880. Uh, but remember, the government do give you three grand off because of electricity. Uh, so you'll pay £35,880. It's about £36,000. Still a lot of money. Um, and it will make the first edition of the ID3 about five grand more than a top spec mm, Honda E or a, a Mini Electric, but it will be five grand under the entry level Tesla Model 3. So, how much do you want a Tesla? How much? Do you want the supercharging network? Starting to test a few decisions now, aren't we? Uh, the first edition, like I say, uh, is that uh, that battery size that is is good for now. 58 kilowatt hours uh, net. The Model 3 Standard Range Plus will also do 254 miles according to WLTP test cycle. 
it's like I say, we should be careful what we compare this to, because if you compare it to something like the Honda or the Mini Electric, whilst they're five grand less, yes, they will do between a hundred and what 120 and 140 miles uh neither of them are a particularly long distance it's i'm resisting saying style over content but you know if you fall in love with the honda's looks you are definitely buying it with you know with heart overhead aren't you but but you knew that anyway so this isn't new news I'd love to hear from anybody. I've got one buddy, uh, Phil, who I mention every show, actually, because it's Phil Roberts of Electric Future. Uh, I know that he's got his order in. I'd like to hear from uh, any more, for any more as well, on email or, you know, on socials or something. If you are excited about the ID3 and you've got your order in, I'd love to hear from you. Like, what was the, what was it? Was it price? Was it the, uh, the brand? Uh, what was it? Was it curiosity? Uh, do you just not want a Tesla? I know, shock horror. Uh, the hardcore Tesla fans uh, start foaming at the mouth when I present the concept that there are people in the world who actually just don't want a Tesla. They don't understand it. Their eyes start to twitch. Anyway, uh, and they shout, Mummy! Whilst looking at a picture of Elon Musk. Uh, let's talk about BMW next. BMW announced today that it is going to shut down uh, a factory in Munich. But trust me, this is not closing factories because they have to. Uh, they're only shutting it for a month. And that is because they are going to electrify the factory. And they're doing it in preparation of the BMW i4. And please, 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 can we have an i4 that looks even a little bit like the concept because it was stunning apart from the grill but we'll forgive bmw uh, for that because they have to make the front of all bmws look the same uh, it's not uncommon for car makers to schedule production shutdowns to upgrade manufacturing lines but this announcement today uh, was surprising because of the length of it says electric the munich factory is where bmw makes the three series Eight thousand people work there uh, shutting down the plant for six weeks will have a major impact on bmw but the i4 is an important car built on bmw's fifth generation electric powertrain the same as the ix3 which is the electric version of the x3 but made in china and a little bit bigger uh, as well the technology is supposed to enable bmw to make all electric uh, hybrid cars combustion cars all on the same uh, production line that's their way of doing it they have shunned a dedicated platform well actually yeah, investors in bmw recently said maybe we should maybe you know what maybe we should have a dedicated platform and be the <laughs> bmw were like mm, maybe uh the, the, no they have gone around in circles on this they've built some amazing evs like the bmw i3 the i8 uh they then dragged their heels a bit uh then they were going to have a dedicated platform then they weren't going to have a dedicated platform now they make uh they have a, a car that you can put any engine or plug-in version powertrain that's just the way they decided to do it but the i4 is a car that i'm particularly excited about because it just looks stunning it is that uh, low swoopy saloon sedan style that we just needed these to be uh well a competitor to the, the model s for a start but also uh just fantastic long-range EVs uh, gearing up for the uh, Munich plant for the future they say once remodeling is finished as BMW will provide and produce vehicles with combustion or electric drivetrains and all on the same line it'll allow us to respond flexibly to custard de um, demand uh, they say the electric sedan will be a 600 kilometer car so that's 373 miles but so confident are they in their new efficiencies that they will do it on an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack which would be going some uh, good luck bmw we follow that story with interest Audi are next. Audi put out a press release. Well, I found it on the Volkswagen Media Center uh, website, but it's an Audi press release talking about bi-directional charging. Now, vehicle to grid, you'll see that called V2G with the number the numerical two or vehicle to home where your car powers your house. You'll see that called V2H. Uh, and actually, people talk about using electricity in your car to power anything, really. And you'll call you'll see that written down as a v2x vehicle to anything really uh, well audi are getting in on the game they say that increasing network stability lowering electricity costs and contributing to climate protection uh, that's their vision 
at Audi and they are the incorporation of the electric car into the grid is at the core of an innovative research project on bi-directional charging and it is interesting to me because of course it's not a Chatamo plug on an Audi it's uh, if Audi make an EV it will be the CCS combo plug and we know that can do bi-directional uh, it, it, it's, it's technically possible. And so Audi are looking into a research project at this. They say they're looking at people with uh, PV, with solar panels, with excess electricity, and where it can be either stored in a battery at home or stored in the car, uh, says VW, uh, at night or during non-productive times of the day. They say the car will use inexpensive electricity to charge up to the desired target. Uh, bi-directional charging provides security of supply, they say, beyond pure cost optimization. None of this is groundbreaking to you or I, by the way. Like, you, you and I know this stuff, uh, but this is what Audi is saying today in a press release. And then they they wheel out the whole blackout thing i wonder when was the last time you had a power cut and if it's you know if the answer is yesterday i'm genuinely sorry i have racked my brains i cannot think of the last time i had a power cut in my adult life now i grew up in the uh, at times of my childhood in the country uh, the kind of country lane that gets narrower and narrower and it gets rougher and rougher and you know we lived at the end of a in a village at the end of a lane uh, sort of through my teens really and we had power cuts all the time particularly in winter if it snowed the power lines had come down uh, we had like we had the candles at the ready right but since i left home and lived in a town i, I literally I, I don't know like when was the last time we had a power cut when was the last time i came downstairs in the morning and the the clock on the oven was flashing because the power went out you know, the answer is never. But anyway, uh, I, that was a long digression simply because I see this talked about all the time. Audi saying that in the event of when you have a blackout, the system will supply the house with energy via the high performance battery in the cars and operate a building without a grid connection independently as a standalone operation. I see this with, with any kind of when anyone talks about a vehicle to grid or whatever, they'll always wheel out. Oh, and when there's a power cut. You don't go off and it's like, I can't, well, maybe where you're listening, you do have this more. And I'm sorry if you do, because that would be a, a pain in the backside. So maybe it's it's useful for some people. I don't want to be blinkered. Uh, right, let's talk about Renault next. Big story today. The uh, UK electric car sharing, it's not car sharing, it's a subscription service. Uh, I know them as EV Easy. And I've always been, I wanted to talk to them on, on, on this show as an interview. Uh, they're, they're not called EV Easy. I don't know whether they got bought or sold or just changed their name. Uh, but this article is about a company called Onto, O-N-T-O. On, Onto or Onto? Anyway, turns out, formerly EV Easy. Uh, they've just bought 1,100 Renault Zoes from Renault. Uh, the first ones have just been delivered, says Electri. The remaining vehicles will be handed over within the next six months. Originally, the subscription provider, uh, which what used to be called EV Easy, had 180 Zoes. And they, as far as I know, did really well out of the Zoes. I mean, they must have done because they just bought a, thou a thousand of them. How does it work? Well, you have a monthly fee. Uh, they provide you the car, the insurance, the breakdown, the maintenance, and... I think last time I looked at EV Easy before the name change, they were still bundling a, a, a charge card, like a Polar card, so you could charge for free. No down payment. Well, apart from, I think they launched, I think you can get a Tesla from them now. I think you've got to put down like three months. Then maybe that changed. Uh, I remember when they launched with Teslas, there was like a deposit thing. Uh, or it was like you had to pay your first months up front. Uh, however, uh, they say that the entry-level price for the Zoe, if you were going to get one yourself, it's about £340 a month, uh, but only for cars of the previous generation. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to look at the pricing of the new ZE50. Uh, that company is one that I've, so I've looked at a couple of times over, maybe six months ago, a year ago, last time I looked at them, uh, when they were new and getting lots of publicity. And because I was curious about whether this model would work in more places like is it a london thing is it a big city thing i'm not sure but the prices were, were really good i mean it wasn't you know i've seen some subscription services where you're definitely paying a premium this looked like a pretty reasonable monthly payment i can't remember what they were but considering that everything's included there is a mileage limit obviously there's a mileage limit but uh but there's just excess mileage to pay if you go over uh, considering 
all those things, actually, it was pretty good. And you've got none of the hassle of owning a car. Uh, look, definitely not the cheapest way to go motoring. Definitely not the cheapest way uh, to move yourself around. But interesting stuff. And clearly, buying 1,100 Renault Zoes is a sign of confidence in electric cars. Another car that I'm really excited about is the Skoda ENIAC IV. This is basically the VW ID4 with a Skoda badge. I'm being slightly less generous than I should be. It's, it's redesigned with Skoda styling. Uh, it's their first electric SUV. It's obviously based on the same platform as all of the VW cars. The range will be over 500 kilometers. Um, that's 311 miles. The ENIAC will be rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, three battery sizes, as is very common with that platform. And the entry-level model is the uh, IV50, the Skoda ENIAC IV50. And it has the smallest battery and does 211 miles. You can get the 60, which will do you 242 miles. And then there's the 80. And you can probably guess these numbers are corresponding with how many kilowatt hours you get, uh, which will do you 500 kilometers. And I'm excited about that because, you know, Skoda's generally a little bit cheaper than, than the, 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 the VW mothership. I've talked about this, the, the Seat effect before, uh, although saying that, actually, uh, the, the Seat Elborn is now no longer the Seat Elborn. It's now the Cupra Elborn, so I imagine it'll be just as expensive as a, uh, as a full-blown VW, if not more, because you're paying for the performance. Let's talk about Cybertruck. Tesla will be changing the alloy. Uh, that it uses for the Cybertruck, Elon said today, after replying to the coverage of the uh, SpaceX and uh, building of a new full-scale Starship prototype and uh, Tesla Arty doing that coverage, Elon confirmed to a follower on Twitter that they would be updating the alloy of the all-electric Cybertruck and it will begin production in 2021, late 2021, according to Joey at Tesla Arty. The truck's durability, he says, was based on the fact that the 30 times cold rolled exoskeleton was the best that Tesla could find at the time. The company was transparent that if they ever came across a better material, they would use it. It seems that Tesla may have found something more durable and that it may be in tune with the new Starship. Tesla has been leveraging SpaceX technology in its vehicles, and that is truly, truly impressive. I try not to get uh, too caught up. I try to admire Tesla and Elon for the incredible way that they've moved the world to electric cars. But I try not to get too caught up in uh, in some of the uh, uh, overblown fandom on the internet. But that is that is pretty cool, right? There's a guy that has a space company, and that the the stuff they're learning from sending rockets into space transfers to the cars one day that you and I could drive. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Right, final story. And a uh, big story, actually. Mercedes-Benz EQC has been spied testing. What do you mean? It's already on sale. Well, if you live in the United States, you can't actually get one. Uh, Mercedes-Benz first all-electric production car on the global market isn't quite in the US. And if you check the US website for uh, the EQC, it's under the future tab. Meanwhile... They're already working on the next generation EQC, says Motor1.com. Why do we see a Mercedes-Benz in these spy pictures covered in camouflage when it's the next EQC? Because the first gen EQC was based on the EVAI architecture. Now, that is used by the C-Class, uh, the GLC... It's a platform designed for combustion cars in mind. They've squeezed the batteries in where they could... They're going to make a new EQC in 2022, which will be on a dedicated EV platform. So that means the batteries will underpin the car in a flat design, much more efficient way of doing it than squeezing in the batteries where you possibly can, where there's the odd space under the rear seats, etc. And you can accommodate more batteries as well, so you can get a bigger battery pack. There's more benefits to it as well. According to initial details, Mercedes has given the EQC the green light for launch in 2022, Makes you wonder if US customers will ever get the first generation one. We shall see. Thank you for listening today. Loads of amazing positive news. Tomorrow's show will obviously be the Tesla uh, financial results show and what it means for the general EV market that's out there. Tune in for that one if you're interested. Contact me anytime. 
on my email address if you'd like to have a chat. It's hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. There are 846 previous shows online. If you'd like to get any of them for free, of course, we don't charge for this podcast. Uh, but if ever you're not happy, you can, of course, have a full refund. Uh, it is free to, to, to listen to and to download, and, and those shows are on there and hopefully will be forever as, as an archive of, of what happened to electric vehicles. And it, it, they're all online, thanks to our premium partners. For all patrons, thank you to everybody on Patreon. Uh, my premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent, uh, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, and now NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com. Hey, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>